Kathleen Soriano and I'm Director of Exhibitions at the Royal Academy of Arts. And I've realised in thinking about it that I only really use drawing in one particular way and that's to illustrate the spaces in which I'm working. And um, beyond that, I, I really don't use it at all. It's actually to describe to someone else what a gallery space might look like and what I might put in it. So even when I'm talking about um, these spaces, which at the moment depict the Royal Academy's main galleries, um, a lot of the lines that you'll see drawn against the walls are, are pictures, they're paintings or sculptures, and in drawing that sort of up and down line, I'll actually be describing the painting itself. So I use them to walk people through our exhibitions and our exhibition spaces. But the one on the, this side, um, it's really, it's the map of the main galleries of the Royal Academy, but I was talking to uh, an Australian artist, Sean Gladwell, who's going to feature in our Australia exhibition at the end of this year, and trying to explain to him how his work, which is going to be the opening piece in the exhibition here, is um, the context that it sits in, in the rest of the galleries. And also explaining to him the theme of the exhibition, it was impossible to do that without walking him through the footprint of the spaces. Um, so each of these rooms represents not only the gallery space itself, but also the content that, that, that's held within it. Um, so that may be sculpture, it, I might be talking about um, the argument of the exhibition, the position of works, uh, the issues to do with the positioning of those works. Um, the only other time I use drawing is, uh, again, in relation to space. This might be when I'm trying to describe a domestic environment or um, a, a house or a, 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 um, a space that I've entered. Um, but I very rarely draw anything literal within that, those spaces. I never, very rarely draw a real table or try and depict a real person in any sense. It's always very abstracted. Um, um, it, it's as if though I need to draw uh, these boxes, which actually aren't particularly descriptive, I need to draw them in order to communicate what it is I'm thinking, even though when you look at them they don't really say very much unless you know the gallery, so I find that quite strange. I very rarely use it to begin my thinking, it's normally after I've come up with a concept, because when I'm starting to think about what goes into those gallery spaces. I'm thinking much more about um, the objects themselves. So at that stage, I'm thinking about the independent artworks, the sculptures or the paintings, and I wouldn't even dream or to depict them in some graphic way. Um, so it, it's only once I have a stronger sense of where they may sit in the spaces that I can actually start to draw this picture. Um, and up until that point, I might be working with um, cut out uh, images uh, or reproductions of those works reduced to scale and I might be laying them on a piece of paper that an architect's already drawn that denotes that gallery but I would never lay it on a drawing of my own, no. In talking to the um, Australian artist Sean Gladwell um, this is this space here in the middle is the central hall uh, the octagon of the Royal Academy's main gallery. So you walk up the main staircase and this arrow is denoted, denote, denoting that this is the way in. And I'm trying to show him that the wall would be constructed across that space so that you'd be confronted and the heavy area uh, demarcates where his video uh, would, be, would be shown. So in talking him through that, I'm also trying to give him a sense of the grandeur that that work would have in that space um, and on that scale. Um, but it, it's also quite important in the context of this exhibition because you start what's essentially a chronological exhibition that's telling the story of 200 years with a contemporary piece. And then when you turn, by a white artist, and then when you turn left, as the arrow indicates, into the first of our uh, big galleries, the, the grandest gallery at the Royal Academy, Gallery 3, you um, meet uh, the um, contemporary Aboriginal artists who are painting in what I call the traditional Aboriginal sense, so they're not making um, traditional, conventional Western paintings, they're still working with dots, they're still working with the patterns. Um, so the whole idea of that, in the context of that exhibition, is that you meet um, people who are 60,000 years old, their tradition is associated with that country. Um, and then, um, after you see this fantastic piece sitting in the middle of the floor, which is a painting which sits on the floor, but actually depicts a salt lake in Australia, because often Aboriginal painting is about the land and the landscape. Um, you then walk through a divide, 
which is signified by these two arms coming out, into the beginning of the chronology. So you hit the 1800s and the colonial period. Um, so you start with the paintings and then you have a little dog leg here where there's a cabinet room of works on paper. Crossover. Um, I'll also, I'd also be talking about how you have fantastic sight lines in some of these galleries that are important um, with regards to how you approach them. So then you'd hit the Australian Impressionists, then the Moderns, and then here you'd hit Sidney Nolan. Um, and that heavy line there with the Sidney Nolans, it was really me illustrating the point to Sean Gladwell, which I hadn't realised, that he's obsessed with Ned Kelly and Sid Nolan. His work's all about the landscape. And the beautiful thing about the show is that his video will be the first thing you see, but behind it will be the Sid Nolans. Not that you can get there unless you go around the exhibition, but there's this lovely connection between the two. Um, and then behind the video screen, this is me explaining that uh, we have some of the earliest Aboriginal paintings, uh, mainly on bark. Um, you come back, you hit an Aboriginal art, ga an Aboriginal gallery with work from the 70s and uh, 80s, or the real beginning, Papunyata, Utopia artists who were practicing in the middle of the Red Centre. And in this gallery, the line there is to mark out the grand, the biggest painting, the most important painting in the show, um, by uh, Boyd, um, which really talks a lot about the suffering or, or the difficulties of artists working in that part of the world. Uh, but at the same time, you see that fantastic white heat. Um, and then it starts to get slightly emptier in the last three galleries because they're totally, well, they're not totally, they're still slightly unresolved in my mind at the moment. So that's what I'm working on. Um, so that's how I would have sort of described it. I, I've, never, I've never thought about having the template and then inserting or telling my story on that template, partly because I often don't have the template with me, um, but also it's drawing the parameters of those rooms and those spaces, which is part of telling the story. Um, but it, it's not a bad idea to actually have a tear-off pad where I might have the galleries of the Royal Academy. But unfortunately, it'd be even more boring than they are at the moment. They just have little, <laughs> tiny little lines everywhere. Uh, but, I, but I also realise that I don't even doodle, um, even uh, at the most extreme or in the most boring meet, meeting. The, the, the most I will do is work with the letters that are already on the page. So I might colour in the holes, or I might do a little spring off a letter that's already there. Which I, th I think indicate, you know, it, it's, it feels slightly uncreative, slightly controlled by what's there. So maybe, I mean, maybe it's, um, this allows me to believe that there's a create, that there is a creative bone in my body by doing this. But it is, it's really struck me that it's odd that it's the only type of drawing I do.